What's up guys, it's Chris, you're watching Plumbing Explained, and today we're going to be changing the Price Fister Pressure Balance 974042 cartridge. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the handle, it's usually attached by a set screw that's behind like a little thing that pops off the end of the handle. Right there where my screwdriver is going in, you'll usually be able to get like a putty knife or something in there and uh, pop the little tab off so you can unscrew the set screw. Then next you've got this little sleeve that you're going to want to screw out counterclockwise. And if it's giving you trouble, I recommend spraying some CLR in there and uh, getting like a strap wrench or something like that on there. You don't want to put channel locks on this because you can bend it out a weird shape and it'll be difficult to thread back onto the new cartridge so go ahead and thread that sleeve out just like that counterclockwise like i was saying and most of the time especially with these older trim plates this like uh diamond shape trim plate or i guess i'm not sure what shape that would be um this shaped trim plate here is an older trim plate so more than likely it's been removed once or twice before so you can expect it to be caulked on i like using the dewalt razor knife that gives me that extra long razor uh to cut that off and then i'll remove the caulking from the enclosure that can also be done with a putty knife or painter's spatula so this cartridge is held in by those four screws and before you take those screws out you want to make sure you have the water shut off to your building apartment house Whatever it is, the incoming water needs to be shut down before you make this repair. And also be very careful with these screws and the little metal plate that's holding the cartridge in because you don't get another one in the new package. So you're going to be reusing these. So there's the new cartridge. That's what it's going to look like. Even if your cartridge that comes out comes out in two pieces and it's black like this one, you're still going to be using that gray uh, replacement cartridge unless you've got one of the brand new price fister valves then you're going to be using the newer cartridge um, it a lot of them are it's basically the same cartridge as this gray one but it's got a different o-rings on the back but this one piece gray cartridge does replace pretty much every single price fister cartridge other than the avanta avante the pull out and turn style uh, this cartridge will replace every other cartridge up until like i think 2015 or somewhere around there when they started making the new valve now be cautious because when you pull this cartridge out there's likely going to still be some water in the lines and uh, especially if your house is plumbed overhead there's going to be a decent amount of water still in the line there that's going to be coming out of the valve so uh, this valve wasn't strapped in so i was able to just kind of pull it straight forward and dump it all out into the shower enclosure but if you can, you might want to like maybe prop a piece of sheet metal in there or something like that to kind of help angle the water so it doesn't just all drain out into your wall. And unlike Moen or Kohler or um, Delta especially or some of the other brands, the Price Fister cartridges typically come out very easily just to maybe sometimes you may have to shimmy it out left to right or top to bottom but other than the avante can get stuck but this one always comes out rather easily and if only the front half comes out the back half doesn't come out you can stick a piece of like needle nose pliers or something in there to grab the back half real easy uh and if it's not coming out i recommend spraying the inside of the valve down with some clr that'll break up the calcium that's holding the cartridge in and give it a few minutes and you'll or maybe even just a minute you should be able to pull the back half right out once you've done that you want to make sure that the two washers aren't still stuck to the brass valve body on the back half of this valve uh, oftentimes the two oval egg-shaped washers uh will get stuck back there on that back half of the uh, valve body and you want to make sure you remove those before you throw the new cartridge in now hopefully yours drained down a lot quicker than mine because this was taking forever to drain down and while we're waiting for this to drain down please do me a favor make sure you subscribe to the channel it doesn't cost you anything it's absolutely free you don't have to put the notifications on you'll never hear from me again unless you want to come check in but please make sure you subscribe to the channel put the notifications on if you like what you're seeing you want to 
learn more about residential plumbing service and repair this is all we talk about on the channel and uh, it's very educational for anybody who wants to get involved in the trade or anybody who's involved in the trade and wants to learn more or different ways to do things homeowners do-it-yourselfers handymen all you guys out there that just enjoy this stuff make sure your notifications are on leave a like on the video and do me a favor share the video leave a comment down below commenting really helps the video nowadays check this out that's my example see how those o-rings were stuck in there in the back there oftentimes i'll have like a little dental tool that i'll just kind of poke them out with pull them out with that but i didn't have it handy so i just pulled them out by hand another thing is if you have the chance and you have the time i recommend flushing the valve before putting the new cartridge in and this means going out and turning the water on and off a couple times that'll flush any debris that's in the valve body there out and that will prevent the new cartridge from going bad immediately or very quickly so here is a crucial step that you need to take when installing this new cartridge and that is applying grease to all of the rubber o-rings on this cartridge and be liberal with that grease put a bunch on put it all over i mean grease that thing up grease up every o-ring you see and grease it thoroughly Another thing I do instantly before installing the cartridge, especially if I know the homeowner doesn't have any young children in the house, is I'm going to set that temperature limit to the maximum. So th these people will have the maximum range of temperature from hot to cold when they're using their shower. And how you do that is you're going to want to make sure that your stem piece is facing directly up the exact opposite of those vampire teeth. Then you're going to slip out that little black plastic retainer piece there and slide it counterclockwise so that it fits, you know, snug up against the little stem notch. And then that's going to give you the full range of hot. So everybody's always asking what kind of grease I use. Um, you know, any faucet and stem grease will work, but I, for some reason I'm really partial to this stuff that comes in the silver can. I'll use the stuff that comes in the little, like, tubes also, and, you know, the, stu the stuff that the stuff put stuff that comes in the uh, little white jar, but I really like the stuff that comes in the little metal tin can. It definitely seems to be the best, and I like the fact that I can just, like, dab it on the tip of my finger and then rub it into the rings like I like that and grease stuff up. It's it's just easier for me. I, I don't know why I, I like that better. You'd think that the uh, tube is a little bit cleaner. You only push out as much as you need and whatnot. But uh, just something about being able to use your finger, um, grabbing as much as you want and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> so after you flushed out your valve body, you're going to want to go ahead and stick your cartridge in. And if your hot and cold is plumbed in properly, it's hot on the left, cold on the right, then those vampire teeth are going to be facing downward, just like that. Those two little prongs, they're meant to face downward. And uh, if the plumbing is backwards where the cold is on the left and hot is on the right those vampire teeth will be facing upwards uh, it's not really that big of a deal it's just you'll have to flip the cartridge over to get the proper hot and cold after you've got the cartridge in you're going to want to go ahead and take the plate with the four holes in it and place that back over the cartridge and then you're going to use your four screws I like to attach like the top left, bottom right, bottom left, top right, you know, go kind of catty corner. I don't just do top, top, bottom, bottom, or bottom, bottom, top, top. I like to go catty corner. That way you're applying the pressure kind of evenly. Once you've got that cartridge plate screwed in with the four screws thoroughly tightened, you're going to go ahead and reattach the trim. And that's really easy. It's just like you removed it. You'll go ahead and slip the trim plate up over the cartridge. Uh, there should be that threaded round piece should be kind of protruding through the wall So you'll go ahead and slip the trim plate up over that and then take that threaded sleeve and Thread that down on to the trim plate and that will hold it tight up against the wall and I recommend taking a little bit of caulk and uh, Sealing the edges up that way you don't let any water get down into your shower enclosure there So as you can see there's really not much to it changing out the price fister four screw cartridge I hope this helped you guys and I hope you guys take Drink care me in a pain. The brown won't go down Time to deploy Uncle Elroy He's got the longest snake around Need to clear your pipes 
without any grass. Oh, Uncle Elroy's the guy for the job. He's getting shit done without being a slob. So give the man a like and go and hit subscribe. He's gonna save you money, save you time. He'll teach you how to plumb and won't charge a dime. <laughs>